hundred times over. That's the story, and that's why this man is a phenomenal man right here. I would like to have assembly member Kan Chu address the audience. We are so delighted to have you. He's been a friend of the Indian American community here. Great to have you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you, Rishi. Uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, welcome you all to Santa Clara. I uh, represent the North San Jose area, Milpita, Santa Clara, South of Fremont, and Newark. So, uh, very, very delighted to see uh, all of you here. Definitely, I want to thank uh, Rishi for organizing this event. I was first elected to the assembly in 2014. And I could not get that far without the support of many of the people here, Dr. Jaffa for one, and my, uh, my buddy at San Jose City Council for, for many, many years, uh, and Rokana Yosh and uh, Yogi and Mahash. You know, so I wanted to definitely take this opportunity to thank the community and thank you for your confidence and thank you very much, very, very much for your, for your help. Um, I just wanted to add, uh, Dr. Jaffa is my uh, small business uh, man of the year. And Yogi is my delegate to the uh, um, uh, National uh, California Capacity <laughs> for, for the last uh, uh, three years. So. Uh, also wanted to introduce uh, uh, my staff, Anurag Paul. He, he, he works in a different office in Milpita. So if there's any issue that, that I can be of any help, please uh, feel free to uh, uh, reach uh, Anurag. I also want to thank the panelists. It was a very, very enlightening uh, 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 speech and comment. I, I feel like I, uh, even in, as an elected official, since that point, uh, 2001, it was about of, of 16 years, I felt that I still uh, learned a lot to the panelists. So please give the panelists a good round of applause. I know I'm uh, standing between the, the, the two panelists who just finished and two wonderful speakers that will be addressing you. So I will make my uh, comment short, but again, thank you very, very much for uh, including me. Thank you. Behind the good man is always an amazing wife. Let's give it up for Daisy, yeah. too. Thank you. She is absolutely amazing. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Kansan has never lost an election yet, because she, he has Daisy. <laughs> and it's definitely true, definitely true. I won uh, uh, the last 11 of the election. Uh, but 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 I lost the, uh, the first one when I first ran for the San Jose City Council back in 1999. <coughs> so but I, I didn't make it. I got into the runoff. I didn't make it. Then I come back and start uh, uh, running for the school district, and then I elected twice, and then I run for the San Jose City Council uh, on a special election. So I have to run three times. I mean three elections. You know, one special election and then two. Uh, 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 regularly of the election for my seat. So, follow up there with the uh, morning 11 uh, uh, election, the last 11 elections, but I do, do want to make it clear that I have lost one, but um, I bring it up if they, uh, you know, I don't, to, especially to the younger people here, don't ever get discouraged if you didn't make it in the first time. All right, good. thank you very much, Matthew. Great to have you, Captain. And you know, the story that you heard is great determination. It's not very hard to win, but Kansan had that. And here is one more person who has that. So that's uh, Congressman Ro Khanna. So, so Congressman Ro, you know, he basically decided he wanted to run for Congressional District 17. And uh, well, a lot of people did not give him a chance. You know, but he's a man of vision, he's a man of determination. And he's got very sincere efforts behind him and an amazing team as well, I think. You know, the community rallied behind Roe to make something good happen, which is having a voice in Washington, D.C. with Congressman Roe Khanna. <laughs> but I tell you, he's not, he's not a normal voice. He's the progressive voice that all of us need. I see his social media, his Twitter, what he tweets, you know, his Facebook postings. And he's got some amazing messages that he's always putting it out there. You know, the progressive messages that we really need to have make happen here. Not only here, but he's also become a national force because he was he was out there in Kentucky and trying to make change happen there as well. 
He's made it to Congress. He's at the national scene. And we are very proud of you, Rob. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you uh, for doing this. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to see how far we've come from having uh, no elected officials to being uh, with uh, Raj and Ash and, and so many and yourself. Uh, and uh, it's just great to see the, the growing energy. I do want to, just on a personal note, uh, uh, acknowledge Yogi Cho because uh, when I was 27, I ran against Tom Lantos and uh, I lost. And there were, uh, you know, when, when you win, everyone's with you. Uh, but when you lose, and we had about $30,000 of debt, and uh, every day Yogi would call me up and say, uh, keep going, uh, you can keep uh, doing this. So I think uh, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of people uh, at times uh, when I was down uh, say, uh, this is something that you really need to do. And uh, Dr. Jopri was one of the fellowships. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, Dr. Jopra, I was thinking of this, yet, you know, I was out uh, to dinner last night uh, with a couple of Indian Americans, and there were these uh, millennials, and I love the millennials, but there was, a, there was this young guy, I'm not going to say his name, and he was going on and on and on about how uh, we should have, uh, if there are people who are undocumented and come here, we should provide them with education, uh, but uh, if someone's on welfare, uh, well, then we shouldn't be giving them uh, economic aid. And I disagreed with them, that, but that was not the point of my story here, because 21 years old, so sure of his opinions, so confident in his worldview. And uh, speaking with four minutes, now when I was young, uh, and I'm, I'm a very down to guy, but if a United States congressman was coming to come visit my house, uh, the way I was raised, you basically don't say anything, and you kind of nod your head, and, uh, and here was this ferocity of opinion. And I, I, I link this to Dr. Jopper because while I think the millennials have so much to contribute, the one thing that I think we have to learn and appreciate is the people who have sacrificed and who had struggles and who suffer and that there is a wisdom and something that comes out of that suffering and hard work. And Dr. Jopra has uh, done that for this community for many years. And of course, Chancellor and Daisy Chu are such uh, amazing friends and mentors. And a lot of people, when they're in that position, say that they are uh, mentors, but then they don't open up doors. Uh, <laughs> Chancellor and Daisy actually uh, opened up a lot of doors. Uh, a couple more comments and then I'll uh, get to the substance. I, you know, I'm so proud of Ash Collar. Let's give Ash a round of applause. <laughs> we just got his first bill through. Through the assembly. Through the assembly. <laughs> He's got an easier time than I do getting bills <laughs> through. <laughs> but it's, it's, so, it's such a matter of pride to, to, to see uh, the articles often, and they'll mention, you know, Kamala Harris in the Senate, and uh, me in Congress, and Ash uh, Kalra in the Assembly, and, uh, and the progress that we've made as a as a community. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, it's just such a great feeling that we got elected at, at the same time. So congratulations, you know, and I'm very very proud of uh, Raj Salman. Raj and his family also have been, uh, you know, when I was running against Tom Lantos, there was a uh, Every, you know, I would get, you know, the guys getting a 20% of the vote, and every uh, week uh, I'd get this check for $500 coming from Fremont. I didn't even know. And I said, who are these soul ones, and why do they care about my race? And then, you know, and then I met with them, and they, and they said, look, we wanted to encourage uh, a young Indian American uh, running. And uh, we have had a uh, a, a friendship ever since, and I uh, appreciate your public service to, to our community and to Fremont and everything you're doing. Thank you. Chandru and Mahesh, thank you. Let me, um, Chandru Hamra is left, yeah. Mahesh and Alon. Chandru, thank you. Mahesh, first time running for Cupertino. Well, let me, uh, I, I told this story a time, but I, I think it's, it's worth telling uh, again. I, I was, uh, Samir Gandhi was a good friend of mine, a venture capitalist. He was one of the first 
uh, investors in Facebook. Uh, he, when I went to DC, as, as is the case with so many Indian Americans, they, 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 they've never asked me in a good way to do anything. And, 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 and no one, oh, go uh, get us a visa, go to this. And so, you know what they asked? They say, uh, and Ramesh Kapoor was a good friend, said, there are only two things the Indian American community asks. And I said, what is that? And they said, don't mess it up. Don't go, don't go do something dumb. And be proud of who you are. That's the only expectation, really, uh, that I had. So Samir Gandhi, though, says, can you do me one other thing? I said, what is that? He said, can you meet with my parents? Can you meet with my parents? So I said, they're in their late 70s. I said, I said I'd be happy to. And here I'm thinking, I've got a crazy schedule. We've got health care bills, all of that. Uh, I was half tempted to cancel this lunch. because uh, you know, I said, no, no, I've made my, my commitment. I'm going to keep this commitment. His mom uh, had a knee surgery and replacement. They come, and her dad, and they uh, very slow uh, in walking, but they, they come, and it means a lot to them that here they would walk from my office to the congressional uh, dining hall. And they start telling their story. And I was so moved by that story. They talked about how in the 1960s they were uh, concerned that they, their immigration status may not have been correct because they were changing jobs. And they went to the immigration office. You know, think about their life. Back then, they probably couldn't have gotten a meeting with a staffer in the United States Congress. And now they're having lunch with a United States congressman telling their story. And they said, you know, they were fearful that they may be told to go back to India. And you know what their concern was? They said, oh, we didn't really care back then if we had to go back to India because, you know, we were just starting out in life. But we really didn't know if we had enough money to buy the air ticket back. So we were figuring out what would we do if we didn't get uh, a chance. And fortunately, they stayed there until 4 o'clock. They met some officer who was friendly to them and said, okay, you can stay in the country. But this is the story of so many people. And they said, you know, they told me about the story uh, with Samir Gandhi. And they said when he was in 12th grade, they had him come. And they said, uh, Samir, make a list of your colleges. And Samir, like many of us, like my, I did with my parents, said, OK, I want to go to all these schools. And he said, Samir woke up the next morning. He said, you know, Mom, Dad, I, sorry, I forgot. I didn't discuss what these colleges would cost. 